Okay, so we are recording now. So this is uh, 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 XR Empathy Circle on the fourth principle, uh, which is um, the fourth principle is we openly challenge ourselves and our toxic system, leaving our comfort zones to take action for change. So the idea is to talk about that principle, understand it more, reflect on it, um, uh, give our ideas about it. And I will, I will be the first, I'm gonna designate myself as the first listener, uh, just to kind of model what, reflection, what reflecting is. Uh, is there someone that would like to be the first speaker? So, sorry, Lou, are we gonna introduce ourselves first? Oh yes, thank you for reminding me about that. Yeah, let's go around and introduce ourselves. First, I'll go first, so I'm Lou. I'm from Northern California in the United States. Um, I am part of the uh, Center for the Culture of Empathy uh, that Edwin Rush started, and I've been on the Empathy Circle team for a long time, a couple of years, uh, and I've been doing e Empathy Circle work within XR. That, that's how I've connected to that, teaching people about it and holding Empathy Circles. Anyone can go next. I'll say hello. Hi, I'm Katie. I'm from Tewkesbury in Gloucestershire in England. And uh, yeah, I've been with XR, um, well, about I think it was about July last year that I joined XR. Um, yeah, and I've uh, grown a lot from the first point to now. And it's nice to meet you. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead, Hester. Hello, everyone. Uh, lovely to see all your faces. I live in London, in Deptford, South East London. And I am involved with XR Families in London as a coordinator. And I've recently begun working more closely with um, XR Community Democracy which I'm really relishing and enjoying and finding it quite refreshing. Um, yeah, I lost all my work about six weeks ago mm. and I have three children. Mm. Um, so we've I've figured out that I can stimulate them all day, every day, and I don't have to take them off to different activities. <laughs> and there's plenty to do in the garden and... Um, yeah, I'm, I, I've been trying to get onto this call for about three weeks, <laughs> so I'm glad to be here today. Shall I pass on to someone? Shall I choose nope. someone to pass on to? Uh, whoever can go next. They can choose okay. themselves. I'll let, I'll let you choose the yourself then. Thank you. Stephen or Michael? Stephen, you, you're muted. Yes. Uh, sorry. You want to go, Michael? Yeah, okay, I'll go. Yeah, uh, my, my name's Michael. I'm from Cornwall in the UK. Um, and um, I've been an XR member for about uh, 10 months now. Um, I came to XR from a background of involvement in social and environmental issues. I'm a lecturer at, um, in the social sciences um, and I, I find the principles and values and the demands of XR very relevant to society's need today um, in dealing with our top system. So for me, um, there is a political edge, mitigation for power, which XR has involved, is, is being involved with. So for me, the principles are a very, very good guiding source. And indeed, I'm, I'll be using them in my, um, in my local group as a basis for discussions when we all get back together again. Thank you. Stephen, you want to introduce yourself?
hey, uh, uh, I'm Steven from Uganda. Mm -hmm. And my, my local group is ex Arab Common Sim. It's a pleasure to meet all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so let's start our empathy circle practice. Uh, who would like to be the first speaker? Who would like to take, take a turn speaking? You can do it, Lou. Okay, so Hester would like to. Go ahead, Hester. And I'll be, I'll be your listener, your reflector. Okay, so I feel like there's a right way and a wrong way to do this. So I'm not sure if I'm going to get it right or not. Um, so I, I'm hearing you say you're a little uncertain about how to do this and you think there's a correct way to do it. Yeah. And so you're thinking about that. Uh, yeah. Um, I had some challenges today, so... I am generally a positive or optimistic person. Um, but I think what that really means is I tend to block out things that are quite difficult. And um, that's probably been a coping mechanism or a strategy. Um, me being very small. So I can be quite selective with what I let filter through. Um, so let me let me reflect that back. So what I'm hearing you say is uh, that you had a difficult day. It, it's been a challenging day. Uh, that you are generally a positive person, which you realize means, or at least part of it, of it of that means that you you have the capacity to block things out. Um, things that are unpleasant and that you do that uh, and that that's a way of coping. Is that right? Yeah. So watching um, a new film today by Michael Moore, which very yeah. clearly reminds me that uh, renewables renewable energy, the renewable energy industry uh, is no solution. It's more of sort of greenwashing and propaganda of the fossil fuel industry or the industry of extraction and raping the earth of its raw materials and rather than contracting and reducing consumption, it's just more of the same. And that was just pretty painful to feel all over again. And so I, I, I'm okay with feeling that, but it, um, it makes everything that much more difficult. Like I feel the heaviness sort of just overcome me again. So let me reflect that back. So I'm understanding you're saying you, you watched a film by Michael Moore today, a new film. That they really helped you see that the um, the green, the renewable energy uh, activity or movement um, isn't really a solution because they're not advocating reduction of consumption. They're just advocating shifting it and that it just represents another version of um, consuming too much. And, and seeing that uh, was, it was emotionally difficult for you and, and uh, yeah, something like that. Thank you, yeah. So, it, um, I, you know, I was grumpy and I snapped at my children and maybe a little more grumpy with my other half than I needed to be. Um, and and I have made that choice not to really watch things whilst the COVID-19 lockdown has been in place. I wasn't coping with the news very well. And the, um, the actually distancing from the news was 
was helpful for my own mental health. And, I, and that's okay, I've realised as well. I don't need to have guilt about being slightly detached from certain things that I can't cope with. Okay, and in this last piece, you're saying that uh, you realized that um, watching the film and the feelings that you had made you kind of grumpy, uh, you know, put you in a bad mood, and uh, you wound up interacting with your kids and your husband in a way that you don't like or that was uh, created difficulties, and that um, and that you recognize that part of what you want to do is. Uh, or what you do do is you distance yourself from some from new the news and information like that as a mental health strategy because it's not not uh, it's not always good to consume it and that you feel okay about that. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. You feel heard. I feel heard. Okay. Great. Thanks. Um, you reminded me uh, of something that I did not say about the circle, which is that the circle has a topic we're discussing uh, value for, but that when it's your turn to speak, you can speak about whatever you want <laughs> and you don't have to stay on the topic. And that actually speaking about what's really alive in you in the moment is part of what keeps the, the um, conversation meaningful. So I, I, we highly encourage you to do that. Um, so I, I will, I'll speak and I'll speak to um, Katie. Will you listen to me? Okay, great, thanks. Um, hmm. So I'm, I, I'm I, like Hester, I'm also, I also uh, moderate the amount of um, media that I consume and the, and the content of it. Uh, to try to keep my emotional balance. Um, I think that's a, a healthy thing to do, and I do that as well. And for that reason, I do a lot more reading than I do like watching TV. Because <laughs> I, 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 I find my ability to moderate that uh, better. So I'll, I'll stop there. Okay, so like Hester, you, um, you try to moderate the amount of TV that you watch and news that you watch and you think that's healthy and good for your mental health and you've been uh, you've been reading which you find you know you can moderate that as on, as and how you like and that, that right. that's a healthy healthy way for you yeah yeah and it's not just the media but the content of it you know what how much am i balancing you know reading stuff that's uh talking about the problems versus stuff that talks about the solutions or talks about other things, other things to celebrate. Uh, Cause I'm definitely, you know, one of the most interesting things for me about working in social change is, you know, what, what reality am I looking into, you know, and I, like I, I can look in one point of view and the world looks like an absolute disaster and it's Armageddon and completely catastrophic. And I can look in another window and I see love and cooperation and people finding solutions and progress and, you know, and so, and I think both are real. I, I think that the thing that's hard to hold is that both are real. Uh, and yeah, so how much I, how much time I spend in each is uh, important for balancing my mental health. I'll, I'll stop there. Okay, so what I think I'm hearing is you said it's not only what you read, but the, the content that you're reading, how balanced the content is between, um, to, you said some, sometimes you're reading things that, that, that's, that are very low energy, if you like, feel feel catastroph uh, I can't say the word. <laughs> I know. Feel you know. Thank you. <laughs> and um feel very intense for you and other things you read um feel very about a loving sharing space where people are together and it's i suppose that's what you're talking about activism but i don't know that i'm putting words in your mouth but you know there's a loving space a, a positive driven space and there's a space that doesn't feel that way 
um, it feels catastrophic. I can never say that word. It feels stressful and it feels negative. And, um, but you, what you said, I think, is that you feel both are, both are real places and it's balancing how you manage those spaces because they're both very real. Yes, thank you. And I think, I think also what I'm trying to say is I really am aware of how much time I spend focusing on problems versus how much time I spend focusing on solutions. And I try to spend more time focusing on solutions than on problems. I am aware of problems. Um, but I also think that um, and th there's value in focusing on problems. I don't want to ignore the problems. But I also think that just talking about the problems doesn't solve them and that focusing on solutions and what can I do to try to make things better, uh, that is important. And I think sometimes I think people working for social change think that just protesting and like talking about the problems, that's actually solving it. And, it, it, and, and I don't think it is. I think more is needed than that. Uh, yeah, and my, my timer went off. So go ahead, you can reflect that back. Okay, so, so you discussed um, feeling you like to be solution focused and uh, uh, it's balancing that, that so that you can, rem I think what you're saying is so that you can center on being solution focused and not getting drawn into um, things that do not have a solution. They may be true, they may be reality, but where's the where's the drive in it or the energy for for solutions and you want to try and stay with that energy i think is what i'm hearing yeah i, I just a slight correction so it's more that <clears throat> i think giving my energy to trying to find solutions helps more than giving my energy to um, discussing the problems <clears throat> yeah. so so give, giving your energy to where the solutions are you feel is more helpful than staying on problem discussion and not moving towards solutions. Yeah, that's, that's pretty, that's good. Thank you. I, thanks for hearing me. Your turn. Thank you. <clears throat> um, just thinking now. Who, who would you like to reflect you? Oh yes. Sorry. <clears throat> um, is it Michael? Is that how I pronounce it? Michael. Michael. Michael, yeah. Would you listen to me? Of course I will, Katie. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I feel very similar. I can't watch the news too much. And I almost feel paranoid and a little bit paranoid. Or on, I don't know if paranoid is the right word. I don't know what I can trust and what I can't trust. But I think history tells me I can't trust that. And so I stay away from it so that I don't have to question that, if you like. Do you want me to reflect back on that? Y yes, please. Yeah, um, you said, um, similar to Hester, really, um, you, can't, you can't watch the news. Um, you know, it, it's making you, in many ways, paranoid. And what I found very interesting in what you said was the idea history makes you very suspicious of the news? I'd be interested to find out. So don't please don't ask her a question. Just reflect back what you were hearing her say. Yeah, um, I haven't got much time, and I'm I'm trying to make my brain work today. I've had a lot of sun. I think I've had too much sun. It's very hot here. Um, yeah, I feel, I think we're, we're well, we're just totally um, financially driven and everything's about growth and um, we're, ba we're battering cultures all over the world. Um, it, we live in a very toxic system, but it, within that there are a lot of people that aren't like that. And I think... Um, I was thinking about it this morning, actually. I was listening to a, a, a podcast by Aaron Hattie Ray, or Roy even, I think it is. And she was talking about um, the war and the trauma 
and actually in in time it's not that far back and i think people were so traumatized that they closed up so the generation the next generation and the next generation have lived kind of been brought up by traumatized people really and um people have closed up their emotions i, I don't know what, whether i'm talking facts or whether this is just in my head would you like to look so Let me to reflect back that to you. Then? Yes, sorry, I'm jabbering on, of course. Yeah, that's fine, <laughs> yeah. fine, um, <laughs> yeah, Well, obviously, um, you, you did actually mention about too much sun, um, you know, in, in the heat we're having today, how that has affected you. Um, and you mentioned that everything um, was driven um, by growth, I guess you mean economics. Um, and you also went on to say that we've been um, exploiting cultures um, right throughout the world and that we live now um, in a toxic system. And then finally, you mentioned about trauma and war and how you felt that we've been brought up in a traumatized, brought up by a traumatized generation. Yes. Have you yeah, my time hasn't gone, has it? No. I don't know. No. Um, yeah, and I think we've been, although, talk, I'll talk about my grandparents, I guess, when I say that. Um, but around the world, some people are still in that trauma. They're still, they're still feeling that on a daily basis, like Syria, for, as an example. Um, and it, I suppose the only way to function is to disassociate. And I think that disassociation has caused us a lot of, pain that we're now that now that's what we're seeing in our culture um and that people don't open up and people don't talk and that's why um people don't rise up and i think xr do and that's why i like xr because i feel that they're opening that kind of wound a little bit and starting to talk because that's where the healing is if you like can i reflect that back to you katie yes please thank you yeah. um well, um, you think that some, some people are still in trauma. Often these people are in war zones, and the example you gave was Syria. Um, and then you mentioned about disassociation, um, maybe disassociation from emotions, a, a person's emotions because of trauma. Um, and then you said about people don't talk. Um, and how you find that XR does talk and you can express your opinions more readily um, within XR? Yes. You feel yes, I feel fully heard. Thank you. Okay, Michael, your turn. <clears throat> okay, well, my, my turn. Yeah, okay. Um, Let's have a look. Come on, Lou, I'll have you as a listener, please. Uh, okay. Yeah. Have you have you listened before? No, yeah, listen I have. Through? You can okay, go to I'll Steve. Do, you can go to Stephen, Stephen if you want. Yeah. 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 I'll do. I'll do Stephen. Stephen, can you can you hear me? Hi, hi, Stephen. Yes. Okay. Hey. Stephen, can can you uh, reflect back yeah. to me, please? Yes, but, but go slowly. Uh, um, yeah, my request is for you to go slowly. My network isn't that good, and that's oh. why I switch off the, 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 the video. Okay, okay, okay. So, okay, so he's um, asking you to go slow, right? And he and he might turn off his video. Okay, go ahead. Oh, okay, fine. Um, um, for me, um, you know, um. At the moment, I'm, I'm on many, many different levels. I'm on a psychological level. I'm on an emotional le at a level. I'm on a physical level. And it's all within the framework of COVID-19. Um, but for me also, this is a great learning lesson. And I find myself learning so much about not just myself, but also believe it or not, about other people. Because having done 
so many Zooms in the last three weeks and met so, so many uh, wonderful people. I find I'm also learning lots about other people's opinions. So maybe you like pause, me? maybe pause there and let him reflect. Yeah, um, you, 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 you're saying, yeah, you, you, uh, or, uh, as per, uh, per now you're on various levels, uh, physical, I can't hear you, Stephen. Yeah, his audio is breaking up. Sorry. Yeah, so Stephen, we your audio is breaking up, and we really weren't able to hear what you were saying. Uh, maybe let's. Uh, how about if everyone but Michael and Stephen turn their video off? Maybe that will help with the bandwidth. Um, you want to try that, Stephen? Try reflecting again and see if Michael can hear you. Stephen, can you turn your. Okay. So, um, yeah, for so, me. Well, hold, on, hold, um, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Michael. So Stephen, can you can you reflect back what you were hearing him say? Yeah, but, but as I said, you, you, he shouldn't go for uh, 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 in his speech. Since, okay. Uh, uh, I, the network of, uh, varies. It's better to take a, a, a small portion and then I, I reflect uh, 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 back to that small portion. Okay. So I and I'm I'm hearing you fine now. So uh, yeah, as, I, I'm not wait. hearing Stephen so fine. Maybe oh, you're not. Okay. What 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 Stephen is suggesting, Lou, is that I choose another person. Is he? Yes. Is that what you're suggesting, Stephen? It's okay. Okay. It's okay. All right. So I'll I'll reflect you, Michael. So actually, let me hear you. Let me reflect what I heard you say before, which was that you're you're you're. Um, functioning on a bunch of different levels, uh, uh, psychological, um, I can't remember the other, spiritual, intellectual, something like that, lots of different levels, mm -hmm. and that you, um, you're you learning a lot, and that in the last few weeks, you've done a lot of Zooms with different people, and you're hearing lots of different opinions, and you're learning from that. Is that right? Did I, is there more that I missed? Uh, that's what I said. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, um, do I still have time? Yeah, keep going. Yeah, I'll extend yeah, okay. your time. I'll extend um, your time because we. Yeah, yeah go okay. ahead. Okay. Um, you know, um, obviously the one about challenging yourself. I mean, that's always an ongoing issue for me. Um, if you're learning on whatever level you're on, physical, mental, spiritual, emotional, you're. All, I'm, I'm, I think to challenge yourself is always um, important. And I'm I'm very much aware of that. I'm I'm that, that's a part of growth, and that's something which I've always been engaged in. Um, but for me, um, the idea of um, what we're facing right now presents when I'm talking. I'm talking about climate extinction, maybe. Um, then my level of challenge has been put into fast forward um, in many ways. Um, because I realize we have to challenge the toxic system um, in which we live in. Um, and the point which April made earlier on about, um, you know, um, this idea of control. Um, and, and until we realize that there are levels of ideological control which shape the way we think about the world, um, and these, these ideo ideological levels of control are often, are often developed by rich and powerful people and organizations. Okay, so um, let, me, let example, me stop you there. Let me, so I understand, what I'm understanding you're saying is you believe um, that personal uh, growth and challenging yourself, you've believed in that for a long time and you definitely think that's important. 
that your own sense of urgency about doing that, challenging yourself, has risen to a new level in the in the what, and where we are now with climate change happening, and so you feel a, a a new a deeper sense of a new and deeper sense of urgency about challenging yourself, and that you very much resonate with the point that April made in the introduction about trying to be aware or develop awareness that our worldviews and our think our thinking and our worldviews and what we think is possible is shaped by um uh, rich and powerful people in all yeah right ri right rich rich and powerful people who have you know who act have access to levers of communication oh. and other kinds of power yeah yes that's what i'm saying though and i'm going back also to the point about the u.s estimate um she said she was also um, a little bit negative having watched that um michael moore film um about greenwashing and um yeah i mean it is a very um i've read what i've seen parts of it i've not read that i've seen the whole thing yet but it, um and i was told about it it seems very negative but for me um you know especially with the negativity around COVID 19 and that video um, if we if we concentrate solely on the negative then we limit also our potential to grow um, and I think um, we have to have hope um, because if we don't have hope um, we wouldn't be members of X star for a star and we all have a target of 2025 to challenge the toxic system we live in okay so I'm hearing you say that um uh uh yes we need to create change but you think that it's most effective to do that with hope and uh that uh xr you, you see the people in xr having hope or you think xr is a hopeful thing and that uh and that you think in order to create the kind of change that we need uh, we need to stay connected to our hope and not fall deeply into dis uh, into despair or something like that. I feel heard. Great, thank you. Okay. Um, yes, Hester, you wanted to say something? Um, yeah, that I I was um, imagining that I listen now to Stephen. Um, actually, I was I was just going to say. Uh, I want to make sure that Stephen gets a chance to speak. <laughs> so it would normally be my my turn to speak because I'm uh, I was the listener. Um, but I think I'm going to ask Stephen to listen to me so that he gets a chance to speak. So Stephen, would you be my listener? Are you there? Steve, Steve, Luke, Steve, Stephen did say it would be best choosing someone else than him. He, he yeah, I just want to. I just want. Yeah, he says maybe he can write his ideas in the chat. Oh, guy. I see. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I was missing that in the chat. Thank you for saying that. Uh, okay. So, um, all right. So I'm gonna. I I don't have much. I the thing I want to say is I want to hear Stephen. <laughs> so go ahead, Steve. I'm so I'm done with my turn, and Stephen, you go ahead and write your ideas in the chat. And and someone will reflect them, uh, and actually, what, what, I'll reflect them. That way, I'll get a chance to speak again. So, do you want to do that, Stephen? Go ahead and type your ideas in the chat. Maybe you continue uh, uh, speaking as you, uh, uh, someone reflecting back to you. Uh, 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 um, okay. So as you I don't keep want, on writing. You don't want us to wait for you. Okay. You want us to continue and then you'll type them in the chat as you, as you go. Okay. That's fine. And someone will reflect them back. All right. So I'll go and I'll speak to Hester. Can you, will you listen to me, Hester? Yes, I will listen to you. Great. Luke. Thank you. Okay, and we'll pause periodically to reflect back whatever Stephen puts in the chat. Um, all right, so what, what do I want to say? Um, so, 
So in terms of this is kind of really returning to the or continuing on the theme of the what what the actual the fourth principle is, which is let me read it again, just remind myself of it. Uh, we openly challenge ourselves and our top topic systems, leaving our comfort comfort zones to get, take action for change. So I agree with that, and I all I think a couple of things about that though. So. I agree with leaving my comfort system to create change. And I also think that part of what's difficult is in doing that is um, acting to create change with love. So I think that's a kind of challenge that people, that I work hard to find. And I'm not sure that. Um, Often people who are working for change, I see them working with their anger and their blame. Uh, and so I think it's a challenge to be upset about something that's not right <laughs> and to find love, to, um, to work for change with love, because I think that working for change with love is more effective. And I think working for change out of blame and shame often creates the opposite of what I want. I'll stop there. So I, I heard that um, you were checking back in with the, the theme, which is the principle we openly challenge ourselves and our toxic system. Uh, in order to bring about change, when the, you thought a couple of things about that, which is um, you agree with leaving your comfort system to create change, um, and the personal difficulty um, that you, you have experienced is acting to create change with love. Um, I'm not entirely confident that others always do that, that others may, um, may react with anger and a challenge to be, the challenge is to be upset about injustice and work for change with love rather than out, out of blame and shame. Yeah, which is why <clears throat> I very much align with the other uh, XR principles of avoiding blame and shame. There's a principle about that, and there's a principle about acting nonviolently, using nonviolence as a method of change. And I do think, um, you know, nonviolence is about acting with love in your heart. It doesn't mean that you that you accept everything. You know, I there are things I don't accept, but I. But I um, don't cooperate with the things that I disagree with, and I work for the things that I do want to see. I work to try to build the things that I do want to see, and I do that with love. Okay. Thank you. Can I reflect back? Please. Um, I heard you say that's why you align with. Um, the XR principles of we do not blame and shame and of non-violence um, and to have love in our heart, which doesn't mean to accept everything. Um, it means that you don't cooperate with, with, with that that you don't accept and um, that you, you act with love to, to, toward the change, to bring about the change. Yeah. Thank you. I just want to say one other little thing, which is the thing of saying our toxic system to me is too broad. There are parts of it that are toxic. And, and to just say our toxic system is too, much too a broad brush for me. I'll stop there. Uh, so I hear you clarify that to say, our toxic system is a very broad thing to say, and parts of it are toxic. Thank you. 
So I don't see anything in the chat yet from Stephen to reflect back. So Hester, if you want to go ahead and take your turn, you can do that till we hear something from Stephen. I have a tired baby here, so I may have to leave you at some point. Um, Who would you like to reflect to? Uh, Katie, would you listen to me? Oh, actually, so Stephen just posted something. Oh, okay. So Can, uh, you want to read it, Hester? Yeah. Okay. So Stephen, um, I see that you've written this and I'm going to reflect it back to you. Um, actually, ever since the COVID-19 outbreak, I have my heart, um, I feel down in my heart by the cries of the people around me and the whole globe at large. Many have been crying for food, others crying for life or health, I, others for their crumbling businesses, others for the fear of losing their jobs. And many have been and are worried about how tomorrow will be for them. So sh thank you for sharing that with us, Stephen. I appreciate you. Yeah, uh, I just uh, want uh, um, I'm requesting for you to, to, to proceed. I'm hearing, I'm listening, right? Uh, you continue as I'm writing down. So uh, uh, someone will just read after. Yes. Uh, then, then people waiting for me to write. It takes time. Yes. Okay, we'll do that. I just want, I also want to acknowledge the amount of effort that you are making to stay connected and to participate and communicate how, how, how difficult, even though it's difficult. And I want to tell you that I'm grateful that you're doing that. Your voice is important. And I'm so glad that you're here and telling us what's going on with you and what's happening there in Uganda from your perspective. I'm so grateful for that. And uh, so thank you for staying connected. Okay, so, so um, uh, uh, Stephen is gonna continue to listen and write. And when he posts something, we'll read it. We'll pause to read it. Uh, and Hester, do you want to go ahead then and take your turn with Katie? Um, challenge today, which was um, to try and explain. No, I didn't really try to explain, but my my, my daughter, who's ten, um, had a had a big outpouring of grief and anger, and um, against injustice and against failings of humanity basically and she has a book which is about women remarkable women of history and brought up, uh, one, one of the pages is about Pocahontas and I said mm, this makes me feel a bit sad because this is about colonization and I asked if she knew what that meant. Okay, I think what I'm hearing you say is that your you um your daughter's been feeling a little bit angry today. I think is what I heard um, about um, the injustices, basically uh, that humanity is failing. Are you all right? Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, she's been reading a book about Pocahontas. And you'd said, um, well, really, that's about colonization. And um, yeah, I think that's what I was hearing from you. Yeah, and you've been kind of in dialogue with your daughter about, about colonization and about the world, basically, I think is what I'm hearing. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, I was about to continue. So the, so the book that she has is about... Um, uh, women that made a difference in history 
and there were and one of the women that um, features in the book is Pocahontas, and she began to read about it says the the, the, the colonizers that came from Britain to what they called Virginia, and then I said to her, "Do you know what colonization means?" And um, and she began to cry very um, and wail to wail with sorrow. We were out in the park, and um, I just wanted her to feel safe that she could do that and express her feelings, and so. I held her and she, she cried for about five or six minutes, it was quite a long time. And she said that she wished that there were no people on the planet. She wished that the forests would be restored and that the animals becoming extinct and she said we've lost 50% of all species that have ever existed and she felt deep 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 sorrow and that's the right response that's the appropriate response and I worry that that many adults don't have that response My feedback. You happy for me to feed back to you? Yes. Yeah, you said the, um, I'm writing some of it down just so that I retain it properly. Um, yeah, you, you, you said uh, you were, she was reading a book about um, women, basically, um, that have made a difference. And you were out in the park and, you were, and she asked you, she was talking about Pocahontas. And you explained to her that was about colonization and she asked you more about colonization and you explained that um it, you just it was about really um yeah i've put here from moving from britain to virginia um i'm not quite sure but um yeah you were talking about colonization basically and um within that dialogue she began to get upset and then she re was really upset um, and started to, I think there was a lot of sorrow and she started to wail and to the point where you felt you had to hold her and keep her safe because she just, you know, you wanted to make her feel safe. Um, you were in the park at the time and she, she was upset for about five or six minutes. Um, and then she, uh, at one point she said she wished there was no people in the world. And then she talked about um, animals a little bit as well. Um, and that you feel that, that that her response actually was a right response, a just response, and how that really is the way you would expect people to respond to the information that you're giving her, and that you, you're concerned that some adults wouldn't respond in that way, and about how adults do respond to what's actually going on, I think is what I heard. Yeah. Yeah. The, um that on a sort of daily basis we uh, we look away we don't look at the um the very the violent histories um the, the awful of, of oppression the the um the, the the injustices and the the fact that colonization never really ended like it still exists and um, there's so much healing to be done and there's so much really looking, looking at ourselves. So there's a wonderful workshop in XR, it's about oppression and um, I hope everyone can get a chance to do it. So we see in ourselves the oppressed and the oppressor and, and for some people there may be the oppressor more than the oppressed. And it's to really hand, hold your hands up and say, I see this in myself. We'll just stop there. Okay. Um, so what I'm hearing is you're discussing some of the violence that's um, come with colonization 
um, and and um, how that's discussed or dialogued, and that you feel it needs the space needs to be opened up. I think. So can I just correct um, something there that that colonisation yes. is violence, like that yes. it is. It's not some of violence. It's it's pure, pure. You know, rape and pillage and murder. It's nothing more violent than colonisation. Okay, so you're discussing colonisation as violent. There's nothing more violent than it. And you um, you rounded up by saying there's a really good XR workshop around oppression that you um, that you advocate people do. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. I feel heard. Thank you. Okay, is there anything else from Stephen? Shall I have a look? Uh, not yet. No. Uh, sorry, actually, I wanted to, the little bit that I said at the end, which was so, is so beautifully kind of brought about in, the, in this workshop, is to, um, is recognising in ourselves that we have both uh, the oppressor and the oppressed. Um, and maybe some one more than others. You'd like to have that reflected back. So, um, you just want to make sure people heard Hester, that. Hester was, yeah, she was right to say that because I did miss that out. Um, yeah, recognizing the, the, the role that you play as oppressor and the role that you have in being oppressed and how that's played out really in culture. And that you can you can be in both roles, I think is what I'm hearing. Is that right? Yeah, and that some of us may be more in one role than another, yeah. Yeah, and some of us may be in more role, one role than the other role. So Stephen did just post something. Sorry, my phone's ringing. Let me just mute him a minute. Sure. Okay, so um, Stephen uh posted an, uh, something another piece so i'm going to uh, read it um while all the cry while all the cries while all the cries are being shade my eyes have been on how the response would be truly a lot of energies have been involved those with enough food are organizing for those without those with houses are, are housing the homeless. Those who can help financially are giving out to those who without. Actually, of energies and uh, actually of energies have been involved and this develops some positive energies to believe that in case these energies can deploy be deployed towards reviving mother earth everything would work out in a short in the in a shortest time possible so what i'm what i'm hearing and what stephen is saying is that he sees how people are responding to the difficulties people are having with housing and finances and all different and food all different kinds of, and he sees people helping each other and um, and that there's a lot of different a lot of energy being put out for that, and I'm guessing people feeling a lot of different things, including him, and including you, Stephen, and that uh, and that you're saying that if that kind of energy can be deployed towards Mother Earth and towards the problems with climate and the environment, that um, that things could be uh, could shift, things could change. You're hoping for that. Is that right? Well, you can let us know in the oh, either in the chat or by voice, or you don't have to. It's also fine not to say, but I was just trying to reflect back what I was getting from what you were saying. Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 it's what, uh, what the meaning. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you again for sharing.
Okay, Katie, you wanna you wanna go ahead? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm trying to remember. I spoke to you, I think, didn't I? Um, I'll speak uh, to you. Actually, actually, why don't you go to to Michael because he hasn't he hasn't had a chance to speak in a while. If that's all right with you. Yeah. I can't hear you, Michael. I think I think we uh, I've already spoken. I've reflected on you, Katie, haven't I? Yes, you have. Yeah. I think Luke felt that if you reflected on me, then you'd get a turn afterwards. I think he was saying. Yeah. I mean, I'm happy to do the reflecting for you, Katie, but I also want to make sure that Michael gets a chance to speak. It feels to me like he hasn't spoken in a while. How do you feel about that, Michael? Yeah, yeah, sure. What, what do, you want, do you want me to speak or reflect okay. on Katie? No, no, uh, yeah, go ahead and reflect. I'm happy, for, I'm happy for either of you to hear me. So if you're happy to hear me, Michael, yeah, my, 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 I'm saying Michael, yeah. and it's not Michael. Sorry, it's my my my, my, my gal. Is that my right? Goal. My goal. Um, it's Cornish. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God, I'm sorry. Does that mean it's Celtic? You've got it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's nice. We, in, in Cornwall, we've got our own language, Katie. Yes. So go ahead, Katie. Michael's going to reflect you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, it's interesting, the, the oppression training that Hester was talking about. I've done that twice, actually, now. And uh, it is very good. It's very interesting. Because uh, one of the things that I found happened when I was doing that is that the group of us that were talking all came from different, we're, we're all from the UK actually, but we all came from different areas of the UK. And what really shone out of it is how your area affects your, your view, I think, or your perception of, well, I suppose your education, the way you've been brought up to see things, I guess is what I'm saying, your socialization. Yeah, I'll stop there for a minute. Um, you mentioned about the, oppression training which you went to um, and um, you found it really insightful that you actually did it another time um, and what you found interesting in that um, training was that the, the members came from many different areas of the UK um, and also from many different backgrounds. Do you feel heard? Yes, I do. Thank you. Uh, I'm just checking. Michael hasn't put anything else. No. Um, yeah, I um, I've been reading a lot around other cultures because I'm aware of my, if you like, white privilege. <laughs> I mean, I've been very poor in this country. But that's poor in this country is very different than poor in a different another country um, or another area. Um, and I've been reading a lot about other cultures because it's very interesting that you, although you can feel privileged, I sometimes look at other some in other indigenous cultures and I, I and I crave for elements of their culture. And I think it's very interesting to to because oppression. Uh, it's just such an interesting concept because although in some ways we, you know, in huge ways, as Hester said, we've been, well, it's violent. It's hugely violent and disgusting, actually, and awful. But what we have missed is um, the areas of their culture, which are absolutely beautiful and stunning and uh, very regenerative. Would you like to uh, me to reflect back that to you? Yes, please. Yeah. Um, you um, said you were aware of um, um, white privilege within the world um, and in part you feel privileged yourself but on the other side of the coin um, you often crave the what you call beautiful parts of some indigenous cultures um, and how I assume that they could enhance your life yes yeah um 
even when you look at certain languages in the world and the way that they view the living world, like we would, I've brought this up before in empathy circles, I find it fascinating that they, uh, or not they, they's not the right word, but different people around the world and how they use language. Um, they don't objectify, I think the word is, they don't objectify living things. They don't objectify trees and rivers and mountains. They would say she or he or both rather than it. And I think it just makes you perceive things in such a different way when you try to do that yourself. Uh, I think it's changed my life doing that, actually, in my own head, in the way that I perceive the natural world. And I think I'll stop there for a minute. That's yeah. my time. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, you're interested in um, how people use language. Um, I think I think what you said was, for example, um, how some indigenous cultures and different cultures, some cultures in general, um, they don't objectify things. Um, is, is that what you is that, is that what you said? Yeah. If you call something an it, it then becomes an object. It's separate from you, and they stay connected to things. That's what I meant, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Stay connected to nature. I guess you meant yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it's the way language d directs you into a way of thinking, if you like, that I'm getting at, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I, just, to, just to finish off, because I know my time has gone, I think we do that to people as well, Western culture. We separate them, they're, they're in it. They're not within our world, they're not, you know, we're not connected to them, so they don't matter. And that's how we excuse some of our behaviours that Hester was talking about and it's wrong and it needs to stop uh, finish and that's it, thank you Okay, yeah Do you want me to feedback on that or, or have I done it? Uh, you don't have to, no, don't worry unless you want to Yeah So, Michael, who would you like to speak to? Um, I suppose well, I speak to. Well, I would speak to Stephen, but um, um, so I'll speak again. I've spoken to you, Luke. Can I speak to you? Is it's? I, I guess Hester's gone. Um, can I speak to you, Katie? Again? Uh, yes, you can. Yeah. Yeah. Is that is that is that okay, Lou? Sure. Well, Lou, Lou, have I, I, I've spoken to you, Lou, haven't I? I can't remember. Uh, yeah, although I haven't had a chance to speak in a bit, so if you want to speak to me, I'll reflect you back. Of course, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, all right, okay. Right, you want me to speak? Okay, um, yeah, for me, you know, um, you're, you're uh, muted, Michael. There you go. Yeah. Um, sometimes, um, just, um, you know, challenging ourselves is, is so important and we all have to do it. And sometimes we are also very critical of our, our own culture in which we live in. Um, from my experience, um, you know, I've traveled a bit in the world um, and people throughout the world have always oppressed people. So it's just not um, about white colonialism it's something within the human spirit which and the human being which going back to the what I was also um, on the uh, these oppression workshops you know oppression um, and being oppressed is often inherent in um, in human beings um, obviously in the last few hundred years that's been more apparent in white imperialism um, throughout the world, which has rightly been challenged more and more. Um, so, for my part, oppress the oppressor and the being being oppressed are something which is inherent in the human being. Um, I, I, you know, and this idea which um, uh, Lou, Lou, Lou made about love, you know, um, this idea, this concept of love, it's such a broad concept, um, and there's so many different kinds of love. Um, but love often comes 
from a feeling of security. It comes from a feeling of uh, comfort. Um, it comes from experience. It comes from insight. Um, and when Lou says, you know, um, uh, which I, I think he also write, has got a very good point about the blame, um, you know, LWAPs are, we should not blame or shame um, uh, anyone. But um, I think that some people don't have access to comfort. They don't have access to insight. Um, so they engage in blame and shame. Um, because of maybe lack of um, education, um, for, for, for instance. Okay, so <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I was really hearing two points that you were making. First, about oppression and kind of the history of human existence and oppression, that oppression's been around forever, and that you think it's part of human nature that uh, people can oppress other people, and that, you know, there's there's a large a large focus in consciousness right now on white colonial oppression which you say is of course you know awful and is rightly challenged um but that you think oppression is much broader than that and and that um and and that it's an aspect of human nature that needs to be examined by everyone uh and then the second and then the second point was about um uh uh love and trying to work for social change with love and that in some way i i, I kind of got what you i what i understood you were saying was that having the inner peace and the awareness and the capacity for acting with love is uh you didn't is something that not everyone has because of their life experience because people have had been traumatized or because people are are uh come from uh um or maybe it's because of the way they're educated or socialized or whatever uh not everyone is in a place where they have access to that kind of inner resource and so um people blame and shame because that's where they are that's what they learn to do or that's what their inner capacity is i feel heard yeah, okay. I, I think what you what you what you just uh, reflected back to me was largely um, what I, I said. That I mean, for me, um, living in you know um, living in Britain, um, we have a very strict class system. Um, still, unfortunately, in this country, and also going back to um, you know Katie's point about um, XR and the oppressed and the, the oppressor um, workshops. Um, you know, XR is, is, is mostly a middle class um, in this country. I don't know about America, but I, I can tell you in this country, it's a mostly a, what we call a middle class um, organization. Um, and it is actively trying to broaden that appeal to different kind of social groups right now um, in, 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 in the UK. Um, but um, it, it can be very, very difficult. But just finish, just finishing off. Um, it's just back to this idea of ideological ideological control. Um, until we break, um, give an example. Um, within Britain, um, eighty-five. We get our experience of the world from two parts. We get it from our own experiences of the world, and and we often get it from our experiences um, from the media, um, radio, TV, social media, or, or you know, newspapers. Um, and the fact is that uh, in Britain, I'm sure it's the same in America, 85% um, of the media is owned by rich and powerful. So when, when we, we talk about blame and shame, most people, many people are, are angry in this country and they act from the angriness within XR, going back to your point. Um, um, and until we can some way um, recognize the power ideological control that matrix which they hold over us um we are indeed fighting a long battle okay so the points i'm hearing you make uh this time were that uh uh you know in britain you still that's still a largely class based system and that xr came out of the middle class the people in the middle who are middle class people started it but there is a recognition within xr that 
that that's the case and trying to make it more inclusive and that, that there's some challenge there. And then the second point was about uh, the, just again, the, the, how, our, how our views of the world and ourselves are shaped. Part of it is our uh, life experience and how we were brought up and what we learn. And part of it is what we learn from the media and that the media is largely controlled by the rich and powerful. And so they have a very powerful um, uh, lever or way to shape the uh, way people view the world. And that um, a lot of people are angry uh, who I guess feel left out or, yeah, and, and, they, and, they, and they do act out of that anger. And, that, um, and I think you're saying you don't think things will change until that aspect of the power structure is challenged is that, is that right that's what i'm saying i feel heard yeah. Okay. Yeah. great okay um i'll speak to katie i don't think i've spoken to katie in a while is that all right katie yes okay um yeah so i agree i agree with what uh michael's saying about people acting out of anger because that's that's where they are <laughs> uh, and that uh, and that it is I guess it is a form of privilege that I have that I that I have um, was raised in a family where I didn't experience a huge amount of trauma and my life experience it gave me a lot of education a lot of opportunity to grow and so I am relatively peaceful a relatively peaceful person, which isn't to say that I don't get angry sometimes. I, I do, but I certainly have internal tools for dealing with that anger. And, uh, and I don't blame and shame people who act out of anger and, you know, uh, that, that's where they are. I have compassion for them, actually. And it's more that I, uh, my heart breaks because I see their deep desire and I see their wanting to make a difference and bravely trying to do that and often what they do results in the opposite of what they were hoping for when when they're coming out of um hey uh you know hate or animus uh it contributes to creating the opposite of what they would like so it's just my heart breaks for it and i want to try to do something about it help transform it i'll stop there Okay, sorry, I'm just writing some of it down. I'm just going to turn my light on. It will take me literally a second. Okay. You said, I, I, what I think I'm hearing is you said you agree, you agree with Michael in terms of the fact that you, you recognise that people act out of anger. Um, and you feel pers from a personal point of view that you've been very privileged in your life. You've had a lot of opportunities and uh, you don't feel that you've had a huge amount of trauma, but you recognize that. Um, and that experience has given you good tools to manage when you, you feel angry, because obviously at times you're going to feel angry because you're human, uh, but you try very hard not to blame and shame. And when you see people behaving in ways that are, uh, are angry or blaming and shaming, you feel compassion for them and your heart breaks for them. And you feel sometimes they, you, what they're trying to do, they actually achieve the opposite. And, um, you know, you find that gives you a certain amount of grief. I think it's what I'm hearing. Yeah, thank you. And that's actually why I spend you know, a lot of my time uh, helping people learn about empathy circles and uh, teaching conflict resolution and communication skills and other kinds of personal uh, transformation skills to try to help people um, uh, understand themselves better, uh, what, they, what they really want and how to pursue it in a way that makes a difference. I'll stop there. Um, so you, I, I hear you saying that you were. Uh, that's where your 
interest in empathy circles and transformative dialogue sits really in that in in, in that grief um, and compassion for people that may not have the tools that you've had the opportunity to get as you grew up and you'd like to find ways to try and help people um, explore themselves and find those tools um, and that's why you're so passionate about empathy circles yeah and one last thing <clears throat> so Michael said there are a lot of different kinds of love <clears throat> and what I mean by love is uh, what I mean by love <clears throat> is that I try to even if I disagree with someone else I mean I really disagree with them <laughs> and I want them to stop doing what they're doing uh, I try to see the human being there um, yeah as opposed to thinking of them as a monster of some kind or an evil person or a you know I try to see the humanity in them um, and that and to me that's that's what um, that's what acting with love means is holding holding trying to hold that the humanity in the person as opposed to my judgments of them or my and my enemy image of them i'll stop there I'm, and i'm done okay so you you talked about um what you what you mean by love when you when you say the word love uh, and, and for you, that's about trying to see the humanity in the person and not the monster, even when you might thoroughly disagree with something. Um, so it's about holding, holding that humanity um, as opposed to making judgments on a person. Um, I've written something and I can't see what it says and I think it was really important. That's okay. I, I feel hurt. That that was the essence. Oh, of it. do you? Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. yeah. And it doesn't. I, I just want to say, holding that doesn't mean that I don't want to stop them, or that I don't want to change it, or that I don't have a lot of feelings actually about the harm being done. I do. I feel that very strongly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it it, do, it does not mean uh, accepting like it's okay what they're doing, or it doesn't mean I'm not gonna. I don't have to stop them or not take action because. You know, I have to hate them, in, order, in other words, in order to do that, to take action. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm done. Thank so you. I, I think what you were saying is that just because you entirely disagree with somebody, um, you, um, you, lo you love them, it doesn't mean you agree with them. You can love somebody and you can offer love without agreement, I think is what you were saying. Something like that. Yes, that's close. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. And I noticed that um, Stephen has posted another thing in the in the chat. So maybe Katie, you could read it and reflect it uh, before you take your turn. Yes. Yeah. So it says um, being so much interested in solving the problem, the situation we are in now of COVID-19. I am so much concerned on how this horrible situation is helping us to solve the riddle. I strongly believe this situation has helped Mother Earth to thrive a little bit. Like, like most of cars have parked in the garages, pollution has been at, at very low emissions, noise and plastic littering has been reduced as many big manufacturers of plastic are not working. The system where people haven't been caring about the repercussions of their actions are at a low pace as everyone is laid down by the breakdown. And more so, eyes of many have been opened that money isn't only needed for a humankind to survive. Did you hear that, Stephen? Yeah. Yeah, I've, um, I can feedback how I feel about it, shall I? Not so much how you feel. Feedback what you understand he's saying. Okay. I think what you're saying is, um, or what I'm hearing is that COVID-19 has had a massive effect on, on all around the world on how people are viewing the world or perceiving the world, that people have had, had 
seeing huge differences because people have stopped a lot, that cars aren't driving around, um, industry has slowed down, so there's less emissions, um, and people might be caring more. You said something about pe uh, people haven't been caring about the repercussions of their acts. So I think what I think in what you're saying is that maybe they are now in this space in time where things are, are dramatically different. Um, and that is opening people's hearts a little bit um, more and making people reflect, I think is, is what you're saying. Yeah, I'm, I'm also, I just want to say, I'm also, I'm getting that you're saying that people's assumptions about these things, like what they need in order to survive and that we have to be focused on money and all these other things, that, that's being called into question. And, and you think that's wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Stephen, for sharing again. My heart, I heard you feel it here. Stephen, can, can people hear me? I don't know if I'm muted. I need to mute. Yes, yeah, I can hear you. Oh, you can. Did you want to try and talk again? See if it works. Do you want an opportunity to try? So he's either not hearing you or uh, he doesn't want to. One of the no. two. So. Okay. okay. So you want to go ahead and take your turn? Uh, yes. So I will talk to. I'm trying to think who I spoke to last time. I think it was Michael. Yeah. So so I just want to uh, acknowledge that Hester has left yes and she put in the chat without comfort and i don't know if that means that she left because she was feeling uncomfortable that's the meaning i'm taking from it does anybody else have a thought about the, uh, i i didn't know, i actually didn't notice when she left yeah I, um, I, sorry go on michael she did say that she was going to leave early okay at the, at the beginning of the meeting Okay. Yeah, so, um, yeah. I know she wrote that. I think she might have been responding to Stephen. I'm not. I'm not saying she was because I don't know. But I think perhaps she was. Okay. Maybe. Go ahead, Stephen. Uh, uh, maybe that. Maybe she had, she had a kid that uh, that was uh, 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 diverting her. I think it's yeah. where the discomfort uh, was coming from. Maybe she's taking care of the kid yeah okay yeah that could very well be my <laughs> as facilitator my heart is like oh she left because she's feeling uncomfortable oh no i don't want that to be the true <laughs> you know but uh so i will take comfort from other people's perceptions of this and maybe we'll have a chance to check in with her sometime i don't know uh so but yeah i'm yeah so go ahead katie your turn Okay. Um, Stephen, do you want to try or, or, or not? You're, mu you're muted, Stephen. Sure. You're muted, Stephen. You got Yeah. There. Ah, there we are. <laughs> Let me try. Okay. Pardon? Let me you ready? You said, you Let will. me try. Ah, oh, brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. So just um, pause often, Katie. Okay. Um, I don't know what to say now. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I feel um, a similar feeling to Lou hey. about blame and shame and I, um, what that is and how I manage it. No. Kate, Kate, pardon. I beg your pardon. I've not heard anything. Ah, uh, okay. So try once more, Katie. I, I, you know, I, I, you know, you know the connection is on my phone. Ah. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I have I to said, keep on. 
the connection is is on my phone yes so I, i'm using a, a, a laptop but the connection is on a phone so i'm keeping on trying to, to i'm keeping on rotating it uh, until i find the network yes so that is no it's difficult it's a difficult thing to do so i'll, I'll try again and if it's too difficult say and i'll swap to somebody else um yeah, I was th thinking about blame and shame and how I, as a person, try not to do that. You're like, you're thinking about climate change and how you personally can do about it, right? Yes. Um, I've learned a lot because I was in a very um, troubled relationship and it really, I was very angry in that relationship. And I really struggled not to um, blame and shame. Um, it uh, really... Okay. Stay there, stay, hold there. Yeah, you are like... Um, um, you... you yeah, you are so you 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 are hungry and, uh, just because you've been in a, 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 a relationship a relationship that wasn't or that working on well. No, you're doing what? Well. It's good. So, sorry. Do you want me to carry on? Should I carry on? Yeah. Pardon? I'll, I'll carry on a bit, a little bit. Uh, yeah, and I felt yeah. very angry. Yeah. And I think it taught me a lot. Um, when it's very personal and very close to home, it's difficult. And how, you, how I managed feelings of rejection and not wanting to be horrible, really. At times I was horrible, I'll admit that. Really horrible. Because I was so angry. Yeah. Yeah. You are like the feelings of rejection that have made you so hungry. Yes. Right? Yes. But I think the whole experience taught me a lot about how I manage, <laughs> how I manage my own right. emotions. It taught me a lot. Okay. Huh. Yeah. You are now. You are now off. Pardon, I beg your pardon. It's okay. It's difficult. So I'm going to reflect, Katie. What I'm hearing you say is that you're, you're trying to work with blame and shame within, within your own relationship, that you learned a lot from doing that, that you, um, you felt rejected or you had feelings of being rejected in your relationship, and you felt a lot of anger and did a lot of blaming and shaming as a result yes. of that and learned and learned from that, that, you know, it, it's not, uh, it's not a good thing to do. Is that right? That's correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for hearing me both. Yeah. And so we're, we're being called back into the main you, room yeah. in, in about 50 seconds. So I just want to say, I want to thank everybody for participating in this. I especially want to thank Stephen for hanging in there and say, you have a beautiful <laughs> smile. I love your smile. <laughs> and and I, also, I also want to, you know, I thank Stephen for the effort that he's making, but I also want to acknowledge the effort that everyone else made too. The patience that people had trying to work with the difficulties and also, uh, uh, like Katie, just in this last piece, you know, you being very patient, trying to connect the desire for everyone to connect with each other and hear each other. That's so beautiful that people want that and are willing to work so hard to try to make it happen. Uh, and I think as a group, we did a beautiful. Yeah. You, you can just leave it and then it automatically just brings you back uh, yeah. once the timer goes down. That's right. Hello everyone again in the main session. Let's wait for all us to join us. Edwin.
Is everyone is back? Uh, let me check. It's hard to. It should be within a couple. There was a breakout. Yeah. They're still popping in. Yeah. Okay. Let's wait for those who are coming back to us. Okay. I think that's it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So we are all uh, back in the main session. And I suppose not everyone can stay with us for the last part of our call and well, feel comfortable if you need to leave. Uh, but we will be happy to hear from all of you a report from discussion in breakout rooms. And um, I would like to ask Bill actually to 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 pick everyone that so we may do the uh, possibly efficient way. Uh, Bill, would you help me? Uh, I'd be happy to. So please uh, uh, start with your name, locale, location, and XR groups uh, you are part of, and then let's Oops. share our learnings, our 